And good morning, my dear chair and my dear colleague. And it's my honor to present my topic about the periorbital beautification in Asia. And we are focused on the uh, microautologous fat transplantation, a uh, kind of fat graphene technique. I'm Dr. Huang from Taiwan, Kaohsiung. This is my disclosure. And, and no matter Eastern or Western girls are eager for beautiful eyes. So maybe we have different favorites shape of eye, but we still have our uh, favorite kind of type in our mind. But uh, what contributes to the eye beauty? There are some uh, essential elements. I think the upper eyelid can include the uh, adequate eyebrow height, harmonic uh, eyelid fold, and also, and also balanced eyelid volume. And about lower lid, we don't want the, any eye bag, and we need a smooth tear trough and suitable malar eminence. And the currency, some oriental girls like the moderate line silkworm. But as we know, uh, talking about the aging orbits, there may be, uh, we, we may encounter some uh, shrinkage of the upper eyelid volume and the lessity of the uh, orbicularis oculi and distance of the uh, lateral junction. There's the, we can see from the test book we know the symptom signs and from the aging or orbit. So this is the uh, uh, real cases we may met in our daily practice. In the left, uh, in the left side is uh, a girl with a sunken eyelid with multiple fold, uh, even though she's quite young. And sometimes we may counter in most cases is a baggy lower eyelid with deep groove, so makes the girl looks very old. And even bad, and even worse, we may encounter the both question and both problem in the same cases. The sunken eye combined the back door eyelid. So, uh, why aging? The outside symptom sign we see is the drooping, but currently the scientific data tells us the the, the 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 underlying reasons is mostly about the deflation. So, uh, the Dr. Patrick uh, pro proposed the idea of augmentation blepharoplasty in 2013. He published it in Aesthetic Surgery Journal. So, and no matter uh, just uh, the resection procedure, he want to add in more uh, idea about the augmentation. So, he proposed the uh, importance of the fat grafting. As we know, the fat grafting uh, technique is still evolves. So, from the 1983. Uh, Dr. Neuber first published the first fat grafting, and the following Dr. Goldman structure of fat grafting was quite famous, and the, the uh, new idea of micro fat grafting, and Dr. Lin proposed the MAFT technique in 2012, and then currently in 2000, 2013, Dr. Patrick published the nano fat grafting idea. And we know what contributes to the success of our fat grafting, it contributes to uh, its, its uh, it's a sequential technique, and you know, matter it's uh, from the recipient side preparation, and the later how matter uh, we harvest uh, the fat, and later how we process our fat, and the later we need still place to the, the right places. So we we talk about the technique of uh, placement, and uh, finally we and doctors uh, talk about uh, uh, adjunctives, whether they add PRP or some SBF also. But currently of the fat grafting idea, I think is from the feel, just the feel of the volume. It's evolved to the repair the tissue and some kind of idea includes the regenerative medicine. So, and we are now focused on the MAF technique. And MAF technique, what it stands for? It stands for is uh, microautologous fat transplantation. And this is a technique uh, just focus on the fat placement. So uh, it's a, uh, we, and we can see from the these pictures, use a special technique and a special instruments. You can uh, define your fat parcels in the in very small kind parcels, and from the one over sixteen to one over fourteen, and one over sixteen and one over fourteen is means the fat parcel is just one millimeter in its diameter. So you can use this technique to contour the very fine uh, area, such as uh, the periorbit area. So this is a real video. So sorry. So this is a real video, and we can use this technique and just continues with the draw, with draw type, and you can uh, uh, place your uh, fat parcel just like a noodle shape and a very tiny, tiny, and you just you can like a sand 
to feel the periorbital uh, uh, area. It's pain. Do it very delicately. Okay, so we see the uh, upper idea. And uh, what is my uh, periorbital math technique? As we ho almost harvest from the. Then to feel the periorbital uh, uh, area, it's pain. Do it very delicately. Okay, so we see the uh, upper idea. And what is my uh, periorbital math technique? Is we ho almost harvest from the uh, lower abdomen or inner side, and we we, we follow the common technique. We centrifuge it to to it's a very condensed fat, and then we place uh, uh, the fat. the common technique we centrifuge it to to it's a very condensed fat and then we place uh, uh, the fat with mouth gun in in the periorbital area in two one over 2014 at uh, 214 so uh, we defined it's a three area for placement the the fat it's a zone one we place a, a fat with a whole layer and zone two is a superficial layer and the zone three is below the upper eyelid crease. It's a no touch zone. We don't put uh, any fat in this area. So we can see the, the, the outcome and the post-operative post pictures 18 months later. So the, the girls, uh, she received the upper eyelid fat grafting Muffed, so it's a still good contour and it resolved it, her her multiple four problem, and we can see the, the fine pictures. The it's still uh, fat is still there, and post 18 months later, and this is a middle aged uh, woman with the sunken eyelid and multiple fold. We also just inject fat to give her upper eyelid some adequate volume. And we can see the, the post-operative two years picture is still, the fat is still there and the, the, the contour is smooth. And sometimes we in, in, encounter some endoforehead forehead lift, there's still some sunken eyelid, we will uh, do the fat grafting at the same time. So we published uh, this idea in the uh, PRS Go uh, 2014. And this is an animation in the real video. It's a zone one is a, a in front of the uh, uh, upper orbital rim, and the zone two is just a preceptor, and we, we just a superficial inject, and we don't do any fat grafting below the upper eyelid crease. And this is a real video. We inject uh, this uh, fat from the lateral, uh, just a little puncture hole, and from medial to lateral and to the uh, bottom to the up. So we have this kind of, and also a man will encounter the uh, multiple eye with sunken, uh, multiple eyelid with sunken, sunken eye. So uh, this is a view with eye open and eye closed. So we define it as zone one, zone two, zone three, like this. And, and this is a real, uh, real time video. She, he, he received the procedure and the, the, the day after the procedure, we, we call him to we follow up and close eye, open eye, close eye, open eye. And we see with, with the adequate volume, he, 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 we just do the simple procedure and help him to resolve the problem. So we can see the post-operative follow-up. This is a three days post-op, still some uh, swelling ecchymosis. And this is one month post-op, still not that smooth, but a little bit swelling. And this is the post-operative three months, quite uh, smooth and uh, uh, natural. So this is idea is also published by Dr. Lin in, in Annals of Practice Surgery 2015. And about the lower lid, 
uh, our surgical pro procedure is mostly about transcutaneous approach and many more excise the skin muscle research and many more remove the hernia fat because we have a fat from the external side. So we have a lot of fat to do. So we don't need to uh, extensively dissect the fat and to remove a lot of uh, her optical fat. And we just skin closure and perform MAFT. So we also defined the two, three area. It's a periosteum layer and uh, the re regional particularis oculi layer and also subcutaneous layer. So this is uh, uh, the, the case uh, we do the transcutaneous approach, uh, just skin excision and uh, eye bag remove and post one year uh, pictures. And remove, we, we can still see a fine scar, but with the tear trough and mala, evidence mala support, we all use the mouth technique to do some fat grating, give her some support and some uh, recontouring uh, procedure and recontouring uh, effect. So we can see the post-operative very close up view. Uh, it's still, uh, the fat volume is quite still uh, uh, abundant and uh, the fat, I think we think it's, it's survived. So this is the animation, the real uh, video we do. We, we define the injection layer to the very deep and to the middle and to the up and we just do a very simple uh, transcutaneous just excise the skin and close the wound, and then we do fat grafting. And we inject the fat from the lateral mala area, and you just use the puncture hole as, as usual, and from the medial to lateral, and from the very uh, bottom to the up. Just uh, uh, feel the whole mala area and the whole lid contouring from the tear trough, and also need to recontour the lateral, uh, the lateral junction area. Okay. So this is uh, the other uh, cases. He, she also re received the lower leg. Area. Okay. So this is uh, the other uh, cases. He, she also re received the lower leg uh, muffed procedure two years post op, and we can see the baggy eyelid is disappear and we use the, the, the fine parcel to do the uh, lower lid recontouring and we can see the upper. She also receives some uh, total facial uh, lipo filling. And this is two years post op. Okay, and we see, and we can look at this from the uh, uh, close up view. Uh, there's the adequate of the OA muscle, and the eye bag is disappearing. And we can see somehow the, the dark circle is also a little bit disappeared. So we currently explain to patients you may uh, encounter some improvement after fat grafting. And we have a, a start, an interesting statistic. Uh, because we have fat, excess fat from outside, so we don't need to remove too much. So this is the uh, removed orbital fat we weighed uh, after we resect it. So the, the, the thorough overall the weight is about lateral uh, right eye and uh, the, the left eye is just 0 0.2 and 0 0.25 uh, mini uh, gram. But the external adding the the fat, the mouth is 2.5 cc to 2.60 cc. So it's, uh, we think the volume is much uh, more than the, than the volume you removed. So just uh, transposition of the fat, we think is not really enough because there's much more volume defects about the uh, lower lid. But sometimes there's uh, the, the, the girls are young, they don't want uh, obvious Suture obviously scars outside, so we also do the transcutaneous uh, transconjunctival approach to the scar inside. And this this lady has a different e inadequate, imbalanced uh, low approach to the scar inside. And this this lady has a different e inadequate, imbalanced. Low baggy eyelid, and we do the uh, transconjunctiva, remove the fat, and also do the uh, fat grafting. And we we think this is a very important area to give her uh, the mala supporting. So we call this the static uh, uh, lower lid view. And uh, currently, I will ask my my patient to smile to to see some 
dynamic uh, lower lid view. So we can see the current girls like a, a, a pre a model of fullness. So we can also simultaneously uh, adding some fat in this area to give her a good smiling appearance. And and also, uh, Dr. Lin has also used this technique to uh, to do the total facial rejuvenation and publish in the an aesthetic surgery uh, textbook. And so, uh, these young, young girls, uh, even though she's just around 30, uh, eight, 30 years old, but she looks tired and uh, old age. And so she she. Uh, ask for total facial uh, fat grafting, and we do this area, and uh, we focus on the lower lid area. We can see the the fat grafting and post-operative six months. We could we think the, the the fat is quite stable, and there's a contour is good, and the improvement of the fine wrinkles also, and improves improves of the lower lid and uh, the dark circle. And this is the stuff of our nurse. And so, so she also received the total facial rejuvenation with fat. So post operate 10, 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Our nurse. And so, so she also received the total facial rejuvenation with fat. So post operate 10, 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. So the fat transfer, the concept is from the volume recession for facial control into the, the skin rejuvenation. The mouth to give you a precise control and delicate placement. So uh, we think it's a good technique to decrease the complication. Thanks for your listening. And <laughs>